This is the second video showing the spore isolation process on agar. So if you haven't seen the first video, go check it out because we're gonna get right into it. It's been four weeks since we first dropped our spores on agar. We showed the first round of isolation in the previous video, and now we've let the plates rest for two weeks. Let's have a look at the first plate of our set and see how we're doing. We can clearly see multiple phenotypes of mycelium growing on our agar wedge. As the mycelium begins to branch out, it becomes easier to differentiate these isolates. There looks to be one showing at the 8 to 12 o'clock position, as well as one around the 6 to 8 o'clock position. The center of the wedge is very fuzzy due to various phenotypes matting over one another, and this matting is happening all across the 1 to 5 o'clock position. Now let's have a look at our second plate. As you can see, we have no mycelium growing. It turns out that as I turned the plate over to colonize, the agar wedge fell onto the lid of my plate. Allowing the plate to rest for a couple of days before turning over can definitely help prevent this from happening. Luckily, I have more than enough isolates to choose from on our first plate, so I'll take a sample from there in our second round of isolation. Let's finish off with a third plate of set A. We can again see multiple isolates showing on our dish, so there'll be no problem making a transfer from this plate. We'll go ahead and move on to our next syringe. Now, as you recall from our first video, we needed to use antibiotics in order to germinate our spores from syringe B due to the excessive amounts of contamination that was present in the syringe. And while we were able to successfully germinate syringe B, I've decided not to include subsequent isolations of that syringe in this video for the sake of time, but the principles are the same as we'll continue to see. So here's our first plate of syringe C. At first glance, it's not very easy to see any isolates to choose from. In my experience, this is just another indication of phenotype matting, so we'll just have to choose a small sample at random and see where we get in the next round of isolation. Moving on to the second plate, again we have no mycelium, and as you may have guessed, our agar wedge fell onto the lid when I turned the plate over, so I'll just go ahead and take a sample from one of these other plates in the set in this next round of isolation. So let's go ahead and finish off with the third plate. And just like our first plate of the set, this dish doesn't have any notable isolates forming either, so we'll take a sample at random from this dish and see how it does in the next round of isolation. Okay, so here we are with our first plate of syringe A, and um, looking for a piece of mycelium to isolate. I found this little piece here, so let's go ahead and sector it off and transfer it on to another plate. Now let's move on to our second plate. This one, we have some pretty good mycelium to choose from, so it's gonna choose uh, this little sector here and I'm gonna take another sample from that same plate for our third dish and place it onto a new plate. Be sure to change your scalpel blade when working with different strains of mushroom. So here we are with syringe C, just finding a piece at random, putting it onto a plate. Same thing with this second plate and take another sample from that second plate for our third plate here. Plopping it on, and that's it, I'm good to go. So here I am labeling my plates. I'm beginning to add a numerical value on the right hand side of our letter, just so I can determine which plate is which to help me, you know, for future isolations. I've done the same thing for our plate set C. And one thing that I didn't show that I did while these plates were incubating is I added a numerical value too on the left hand side of our letter just to show me that this is the second round of isolation I'm working with. So here we are with the first plate of syringe A, and you can already see that this mycelium is already beginning to have a lot more uniformity. So we're getting closer to actually having a pure isolate with this dish. Let's move on to the second plate. And here we'll also see that this mycelium is having a lot more uniformity. So we probably don't have that many more isolations that we need to do for these plates before we get to a pure isolate. And here we are with our third plate. Now we have a little more variation on this plate, but there is a strong sector that we can choose from right there towards the bottom. And we'll go ahead and choose this for our next round of isolation. So here we are with the first plate of syringe C and still pretty fuzzy. I do see something here around the six o'clock position that we can choose from but nothing stands out too significantly. So let's go ahead and move on to our second plate. Here for our second plate, still pretty fuzzy. I do see something here around the nine o'clock position. I think I'll take a sector from that for the next isolation. And now for our third plate, 
And it looks like we still got some more of just that fuzz. So I'm going to go ahead and take a sample at random and see if we can get something a little bit more definitive in our next round of isolation. All right, here we are with the third round of isolation. And we're going to breeze right through this, especially with syringe A. There's a lot of uniformity to choose from, so it's not very hard to choose a solid sector of mycelium to make our transfer from. Here in plates two, right here, I got this one from the corner. Nice little transfer, easy, simple. Plate three, we have some mycelium here at the six o'clock that I'm gonna get a transfer from. Pull that bad boy out and make our transfer. Simple. So always be sure to change your scalpel whenever you're working in between strains. Here, so we're gonna see, I found this little edge I thought that was a good candidate. For the second plate, there's that little piece I kind of saw, a little consistency. And then with our last plate, we'll go ahead and choose this little piece. Uh, oops, I dropped it. Let me go ahead and go back and take another little piece right here and make our transfer. And perfect, good to go. And here we are labeling our plates, same thing. Left hand side of the letter is our round of isolation and the right hand side is the plate number. All right, and here we are week six. It's been a week since our third round of isolation and we're gonna have a look at our plates. Here's the first plate, the syringe A, and ooh, we got nice ropey mycelium. I think we're about there with this specific isolate. We're maybe just one or two transfers away from a pure isolate. Here on the second plate, oh, we got a little more inconsistency. Sometimes we take our transfer and there is something that piggybacks on with the transfer. It may not look like it, but when we see the progression, it's, it's very apparent. Here on this third plate, looks like we got two different isolates forming, so we can choose either or, or both. If you got spare plates, hey, have at it. Here we are, syringe C. And look at this, now we can kind of see a lot more consistency with mycelium isolate starting to kind of get out of that mucky fuzziness that's been all over our transfers with this syringe C. And the same thing with our second plate here. There's a lot more consistency with the mycelium as it's growing, so easier to sector it out and choose from. Here on this third plate, you can see that we have some bacteria that got transferred over but still some solid mycelium, a little more uniform to choose from. So I'm really starting to love the progression of this syringe. All right, here we are, fourth round of isolation. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Syringe A, first plate. We're gonna burn right through this. We got easy solid mycelium to choose from. I mean, right here, very easy. Just take that little piece from the right-hand side and plop it onto our plate. Now moving on to our third. Plate of, oh my God, look at that. Look at that. That's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. Transfer that over. Now, you gotta change your scalpel. You gotta change the scalpel in between, of course. Syringe C, here is the isolate starting to show itself. Transfer that over from the first plate. I'm gonna move on to the second plate here. Again, very simple to see where we wanna sector our mycelium from. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this piece right here. And I pierced it too deep on the agar wedge, so I was having trouble getting it off. So I used the side of the jar to kind of help me. And for our third plate, it's gotta avoid that little colony bacteria that formed. Very simple transfer though. And we got it on and that's it. All we gotta do now is just label our plates and we're good to go. Now. This video is donezo. We got one more video. I know I said two, but we're gonna make a third one. Plot twist, this is a trilogy. Next one's gonna be very quick, very simple, to the point. We're gonna get these isolates into agar slants. So stay tuned for that. And as always, consider supporting our shop at freshcultivators.com for all your mycology needs. Your contributions are greatly appreciated. Thank you so much, much love, and we'll catch you here in the next one.